activated, please leave the town hall using the nearest designated fire exit. Form up on the assembly point at the rear on exchange flags. Kindly ensure all mobile phones are switched off. things to try to start the meeting proper. Um, I've got a question to make actually from the last meeting. Um, Councillor Miller, I was quite rude to you at the last meeting. I wanted to apologise. It wasn't worthy of me, it certainly wasn't worthy of you, so I wanted to apologise and Miss forward. So I was, I was a bit tired and a bit narky, and certainly my husband wasn't there. So, you know, I usually text you out on things, but you wouldn't know you. So, so I'm really sorry. Samir Kalakesh is leaving us in April and this 
meeting because he's going to be out. Now, Samir, um, Samir and I worked together for about six, seven years. And um, English is his second language. He speaks about eight languages, but yeah, English is his second language. I've seen these bits, I'm not sure, is it? It's his second language. And he used to tell everybody that uh, he and I were going to retire together. And I used to say, Samir, no, that gives the wrong impression. We are retiring at the same time. <laughs> but um, he is actually going, he's going off to pastures new. I'm not quite sure what he's doing, doing something else. But anyway, so I would like to place, place on record my thanks to you for the work that you've done. It'll probably not be me for six years for a kick off. But um, for all the things you've done in this council, so I just want to say that thank you.
there any further initiatives that could be taken to reduce the number of vacants? I appreciate we've got the landlord residence scheme that has some benefit. I appreciate this council supported um, joint motions to, to tax vacant properties. That will have a benefit. But is there any other material uh, ways the council thinks they can drive forward that objective um, that are not being done currently? And I, in particular, I'm very conscious of the work done by Leeds City Council has engaged private firms to actually help with a vacant initiative.
somebody that's seen budget meetings uh, in this council. You know, most of the budget meetings that I've been uh, at have been dealing and taken with um, small amounts of, of, of cuts, and usually they've been actually doing things that were necessary to do, like reducing council tax and all of those things, but they were based on the fact that we had a government that was supporting this council with funding. And since 2010, we've been in a situation that I'll explain as I go through the presentation of what we've faced. But can I just say, that one of the things that gives me huge uh, amounts of pride is not just, as I said, the likes of Samir, but the officers in this council and the trade unions in this council that have worked with us every single step of the difficult uh, path that we've been on since 2010 to actually keep our city functioning, running and to protect the people. And you know, I say constantly you know, to uh, people who work in the city council, join your trade union, be proud of your trade union, work with your trade union because they belong to this organisation just as much as anybody else. And that's always something that we should remember. The workforce are our trade union colleagues and we're delighted and happy to have them working with us. And I just also want to pay tribute to the chief executive and to the director of finance, uh, to Peter Casterton and all his team, and also to the directors as well, who faced some uh, meetings, long meetings, lasting uh, to well into the night, burning a lot of oil and candles to actually try to resolve the problem. That almost became uh, <coughs> difficult every single week as we waited for government announcements and as we actually waited uh, for final settlement. So I want to place on record my thanks, but also the cabinet's thanks, the cabinet members' thanks. And I'd like to thank the cabinet personally for all their efforts and for all their work alongside me, looking to find uh, solutions to what is clearly a hugely uh, difficult task. So, as I said, for me, I want to thank our staff most importantly because we I've said it at you know, the meetings that I've held uh, with the workforce here, uh, that we depend so much on them and they're doing so much more with less that, as I said, it is uh, our job to remind the public of the fantastic work uh, that they do. So thank you all for your support and your contributions to help us. Let me just uh, see if we can work this technology now. Okay, this is, I just want to uh, talk to you in terms of, before I move the budget, explain to you where we are uh, at today, but also just remind you of where we come from. And it's important to do that. It's important to remind ourselves of what's happened to us since 2010. Now, as an administration, I came uh, into... Uh, the office in the old municipal building and started to get some uh, absolutely uh, remarkable stats and figures that we had to deal with and pick up. And they then, on there, if you add them up, if you add them up, that comes to a full year of council tax. So we've lost it, a full year of council tax. If you look at that board and tells you what we inherited, 17 million in adult social care, Samir Calagetti will tell you that, 17 million, 11 million pounds in children's services. We even picked up a bill for capital and culture in 2008 of 22 million pounds. And the biggest insult of all, despite them knowing about it for five years, the previous administration never sorted out single status and equal pay. And again, our trade union colleagues will actually testify to that's something that we had to deal with and we had to pick up. That's a full year's council tax. Why doubt in debt that we inherited and we had to pick up? So we need to remind people of that. And then, of course, then we had um, something that we didn't imagine that would happen, but we had a... Uh, government that clearly tried to and still is uh, dismantling uh, local government.
months. And if you look at that 470 million pound in real terms, that's exactly what this administration, this administration has had to deal with over the last six years. We lost 127,000 part of renewal. And when uh, Councillor Radford talks about the empty properties and stuff, well, of course, we probably wouldn't have many of those properties derelict and empty if we hadn't had that 127 million uh, housing market renewal initiative taken away from us. And then we had 350 million pounds of build building schools for the future taken away for, from us. Endorsed in April 2010, endorsed, granted, signed, and in June 2010, pulled away from us. And of course, having said that, then we got drip, 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 responsibilities passed to this administration as to others across the country. But each time something was passported to us, it was actually with reduced funding, reduced green fence funding. That meant we had to pick up the pieces, and a consequence of the budget meant that we lost staff. And of course, I, you know, important to think it was um, Councillor Juara, as you said, get over it in terms of the, the, the city's moved on from the cuts. Well, you know, five out of the six years that we faced the savage cuts that we faced in the city were with a little Democrat administration. We had £138 million pound of deficit and debt that we inherited from the local Liberal Democrats and then the national Liberal Democrats gave us £470 million pound worth of cuts. So we'll never forget that, Councillor Juarez or anybody else. You can come back and get your chance as well as people. Okay, council tax context. I just wanted to talk to people about that context. And again, it's really important that people understand that and actually get to know those figures and, and understand really why we talk about the problems we face, we tear ourselves to others. And you know, when uh, called me Dave before he, he gave up his position as MP in Whitney, and I was down there last Saturday, by the way, my brother in law lives down there, it's quite a beautiful place, uh, with no potholes and uh, no, no problems. But uh, that one constituency of Whitney in Oxfordshire actually gets uh, more in council tax than the five constituencies in Liverpool, one constituency in the south of England gets more in council tax than we do. And there's another amazing fact. Bristol, with a smaller population than Liverpool, by about 30, 34, 35,000, actually gets 38 million pounds more in council tax than Liverpool. And the reason, of course, is because they have uh, higher bands of council tax, uh, sorry, or council tax bans that give them a higher income than, than we do. And that is 38 million. And the fact of the matter is, that's not Bristol's fault, but that is, uh, if you like, the flaw in the local rate support grant uh, that is divvied out by uh, this government. And I have to say, by previous Labour administration, we should have solved the problem of the bar for you. Um, and there you go, that bottom figure, if we receive the average cut, not the lowest, not the lowest, but the average cut would be 123 million pound better off, and we wouldn't be cutting anything. In fact, we'd have, uh, as you can see, 33 million pound uh, to spare. And there it is. That's what we <coughs> dealt with. That's exactly what we've dealt with uh, since the budget in 2011-12. There the figures. There the facts um, that are clear. Not not spun. They're absolutely good for anybody to see. Um, and for everybody to check, they're, they're the figures there. 420, 470 in real terms is that particular uh, figure. And of course, when we became the administration, you know, we wanted to do uh, so much more in terms of to change uh, this city for the better. But because of that 58, let's be clear about this. If, any private sector company lost 58% of the fund, it didn't go under. But we lived with that 58%. And but what we set out was to make sure that our administration protected the most vulnerable in this city and also tried to grow our, our city. Because in 2020, as I keep reminding the council and keep reminding the public, in 2020, grants for the city, and not just for Liverpool, but grants for 
and all councils are actually removed, which means we have to fend for ourselves. And that's why it's important that we grow the economy, we create jobs, we create new businesses in order for us to start to survive. That's why we build new houses and we'll show how that has helped us. That's why the innovative things about our house building company that we're setting up will actually help us protect and support services. So they're the two tenets, if you like. They're the two things that underpin this administration and what it's about. And so if we look at where we are and the council tax and the budget report that's before you and why we're doing the things that we're doing, we are increasing the council tax by 4.9%. Within that is the preset, the added social care preset, which we are actually, it's allowed, we want to do it over three years. We brought it into two years so that we can actually get the money uh, as quick as we need it. And so that's where probably uh, down the house at nine million pounds, just over about 8.8 .8, uh, million pounds is the uh, figure, if you like to be exact, for the dedicated social care preset. And then one of the things that, again, that, you know, when uh, people look back at this administration and how it's conducted itself and how it's behaved and what it's done, you know, um, we haven't had the fortunate. Um, partnership of a government that has been funding and supporting uh, our city in a fair way. We've had uh, the unfortunate uh, partnership of a government that is hell-bent on uh, destroying local government. And that's why when David Cameron, before he launched the big society, uh, launched the fact that austerity was going to be something that this government was going to continue with. Uh, and he asked for 25% uh, from all departments across the government. And then it pickles uh, the zealous um, who know nothing about local government, often Cameron 27% in terms of cuts. And as a result of that, you know, we've been getting bludgeoned. But when in 2020 we have the business rates that comes into effect, I signed up to be part of a pilot scheme, a business pilot scheme. And we gave evidence to uh, DCLG Select Committee on Local Government about how that would impact on us. And I made sure that Liverpool had in our clause for a business rates pilot a no detriment clause. And that meant that as, the, uh, as we moved to 2020, there's an incremental scale rising of business rates retention. We've been able to argue that the detriment <coughs> to us is there to see and for everybody to see it quite plainly. And we've been able to manage to get some funding under the uh, Better Care Fund and the business rates into our city's budget. And together with the £13 million pound that we're using from reserves and the £8 million pound that we've got through the presets, we've been able to do things differently and rather than hit services with a £45 million pound cost, We've been able to balance that out, take that 22 million off, and that's why we're able to protect some services and do things differently with some investments, which mean that we're protecting the vulnerable, but still growing the city's economy and creating new business. So in 2010, and um, I actually thought that Councillor Radford was going to raise an issue um, when, when he got up and on that particular issue of um, the budget. Don't forget, this is only, this is only, it's still going to want to see this machine. That might be my pacemaker. <laughs> I'll try and move, move it over here. Um, so, but the, the top part of it, um, 174 uh, billion. If you notice in the budget report, for those of you that have read it, You'll see that we are now with reserves that are below 5%, which is not the um, recommendation. It might help if you turn it off, but I'm going to get the my skybox. <laughs> turn it off, turn it off. Um, so, there you go, see, the listen, the listen. I'll use this little slide. So, 174 million is what we have in reserves, and we've used those reserves 
every single year. And that's what we use in terms of putting into adult social care. Uh, and we've done that at Samir will tell you that we've done that every single year, not just putting money into adult social care, but also into children's care and supporting uh, supporting those particular uh, services as, as well. So um, as I said, it was 24.8 last year. We're setting up, it says uh, on there, we're setting about setting out 13 million in the reserves to be used in 18, 19 and 19, 20, plus that money from the Better Care Fund, which all means that, as I said, we can do uh, things differently. Okay, now let, the, there's some money within reserves that we can't use, and that's about uh, EU clawback uh, and legal claims and insurance and, and, and that sort of uh, thing. Okay, um, I don't know if the screen will come on, but if you just listen, we're working on a, a three-year budget, and we've rescheduled the debt. We've actually tried to uh, do that quite successfully. All credit to Becky and uh, Peter and the team uh, for being able to do that, and that saved us um, some funding, some money. But let, let's have a look at what we're able to do. And the, the issue of one-stop shops. Um, what we all, I mean, when the one-stop shops were, were set up in 2001. Uh, they were mainly used in neighbourhood renewal fund uh, that was set up and it was because we had a housing stock uh, and rightly so, uh, they were important. Uh, but today, with new technology, with the fact that we've got no council housing, you know, it's arguable that we certainly don't need uh, the number and especially if we are trying to protect services like adult social care and children's services that we have to look at that. So, in the budget, is enough money to pay for the one-stop shops uh, for this year, but it's important that we realise that particular savings <coughs> 2.7, and so we're going to set up a task group that looks at uh, how we can do things differently. And we're also talking to government because the Job Centre Plus uh, is moving into um, St John's Market, and we've got the government who are talking to us about a one estate programme we're going to look at uh, measures uh, of their estate with local government's estate. And so there's a real possibility that we might end up with any of them closing, that we could put CAVs in there with Job Centre Pluses to try and get a, a better fit and a better approach. But that's for the task group to decide, and we'll look at that, we'll include uh, other parties if they're interested in, in, in joining that, but they probably won't. And then if you look at the um, the library service. Let me be absolutely clear you know, to those who would demonstrate outside saying bring your book, bring your library. But let me suggest to them that they want to get that book. They want to read that book and read the facts, the financial facts of life within there of what we're dealing with. But it's not our intention in this council to close any library. It's our intention to work in a way, in a creative way, Working with the voluntary sector, working with the trade unions, working within our own estate to actually protect all of our libraries if we can. That's our intention. I always remember council making it up, telling people in Allerton two years ago that we were closing Allerton Library. Uh, that's the type of thing that, of course, we'll face with uh, whatever we come out with. But there is no intention to close any library. We've got a, a review that's looked at the situation, and we will have another task force because they're protected for 12 months. But we will look at that, and there will be a report brought to the council in six months' time for us to debate and look at, and there will be consultations uh, within that. And that's the same uh, for our one stop shops. So I, I take it this is actually broken down then. If no one can see these screens except me. Um, so, then I come to protecting the most vulnerable. Um, and if you uh, look at what we've actually done, and you know, when the debate going on around um, the homeless and um, and what we do to support people, it's important that everybody in the council anyway understands that. I mean, obviously, I can't predict what people do with the information and how they want to spin it in line uh, 
But the reality is that that money there, in terms of 12 million, is spent on people uh, who find themselves homeless. And what we do is we provide 750 beds in hospitals every night, and we help over 6,000 people and stop them from becoming homeless. And we're praised by Public Health England, we're praised by Shelter, praised by Public Health England as the best in the country, and yet we're slammed by the Liverpool Echo. And that, to me, is an absolutely an appalling situation. It's the financial challenges that we face as our city is ignorantly, by choice, not taken up or known by the Liverpool Echo and the one that attacked us, as you see in today's paper with the rails that are up on the Mount Pleasant, Pleasant car park, which are deliberately put there so we can house machines that go into the city centre to clean the city centre. Disgracefully, the Echo calls that our, our railings to ban homeless people from being there. An absolutely disgraceful uh, comment from the Echo and disgraceful journalism that prints it. Okay, if you look at the things that we're doing in terms of £3 million uh, pound, in addition to the £12 million, in addition to the £12 million, £3 million pound, uh, shielded 43,000 people, 43,000 people last year received council tax support from this administration. 43,000 people. £2.5 million was paid for crisis payments to 12,000 people. 12,000 people last year presented themselves to the council, to us, for crisis payments because they'd been sanctioned or they weren't able to get benefits. And without us giving them that financial support, they would have been evicted. So that adds to the fact of how many homeless people were protected. Stick so that in your pipe, Liverpool Echo, and print it. Well, that's a fact. And then we spend two million on discretionary housing payments, affecting 8,700 people. All this information is on our website. All this information is available to the Liverpool Echo. We choose not to print it. And then there will be uh, another, what we're doing, by the way, in this budget, what we're doing in this budget, is actually providing an extra two million pound this year than we did last year. We're actually providing an extra two million pound to target those most in need because we know how difficult it is for people to survive and manage in this city under a Tory government. That's why we're doing it. And then, as I said, if you uh, look at that fact, that two million. And then we look at what we've done in terms of protecting adult and children's social care. And you look at the scale and the size of the money that uh, is paid out to run those particular services, that the 8% uh, of the overall savings proposed is <coughs> coming in those services and we'll do our damnest to make sure that they don't come out of frontline services, but they come out of uh, the back of office services and anything else uh, that we can do. So what are we protecting? Well, no children's centres are closed in Liverpool, and we're protecting children's centres once again in this city, protecting our children's centres when there's been 700 children's centres across the country closed. Liverpool, despite the fact that we're the hardest hit council in the whole country, is protecting our children's centres. And we're, we're setting up innovative things like the Liverpool Lecky Company working with Nottingham uh, City uh, Council. We're protecting the CRU because we know how important uh, the community and voluntary sector is to the vulnerable within this city. And we're doing that and protecting them. And that's important. The schools with the crossing patrols, of course, uh, we're protecting what we've already done as well, and people know about this, we give a million pounds to credit unions in the city. We've got the discretionary fund, uh, which helps local groups. The Mayor's Hope Fund has paid for, uh, for deliveries and for vans uh, to help uh, our food banks, and also uh, gave direct funding uh, and grants to them. 
And you know, I, I, I stuck this in because I, I, you know, I hear that you know outside the, the demonstration, um, <coughs> and it's ironic, isn't it, this, that you know where we've gone through um, probably, as I said, more difficult challenges in times than anybody. And I remember uh, the first year that we had a, um, a consultation with the public, and it was made up of uh, the old militants and. Uh, all of those that, that, that wanted to come and protect us, and the abuse and the language was appalling. And that was in 2011. And they predicted that Liverpool would be bust by uh, 2012. Well, yeah, here we are. And the bottom line as well is, and remember this, and it's important that you do, because when I talk about protecting the most vulnerable, when I talk about standing up for the weakest in this city and trying to protect them, if we set an illegal budget, because that's what, they ask, that's what they're asking for, that's what they want, there would be no mandate from Whitehall, because the law doesn't allow for us to set a, a, a legal budget, there will be no uh, sort of uh, re repeat of uh, the glorious defeats of the 80s. What would happen would be, within days, there would be officials that come into this city to run the services in this city. And let me tell you the frightening thing about that. Is they haven't got your values. They haven't got your principles. They haven't got your feelings about protecting the most vulnerable. They would just simply cut the easiest options and we wouldn't be able to do any of the things that we're doing in this city. So be careful what you wish for uh, the militants uh, within our city. Okay, so then we move on to the second strand of, of what we've done within our city and how we've uh, tried to generate money that our 